Hi, this video is a uh, viewer request about the throttle cut. And I realized I'd never done a throttle cut video yet, so I figured I'd do this one. Two things, the viewer had a specific request, and I will show that. First, I'm going to show how I normally do it. Maybe that'll be sufficient for what his needs are. Now, I didn't really come up with this, the one that I use mostly. Um, I think I probably saw it on uh, RC video reviews or something, but uh, it's very uh, effective. It's got some safety behind it rather than just the, the toggle switch cut. Uh, so first let me show you how I normally do it. Uh, one caveat here, I've moved my momentary switch. My momentary switch is over here. Come standard, the momentary switch is on this side. Now I've moved mine over, so now this side is my throttle cut. So more than likely, even though I'm using SH for my throttle cut in this video, you're going to probably be using SF over here for your throttle cut. First let me show you how I do my throttle cut. So right now I've got it up, which is my throttle cut position. When I take my throttle cut off, I'm going to be pushing that away. So I'm going to be zooming into the screen, so you won't be able to see that. But when I activate my throttle cut, that'll be this. When I deactivate my throttle cut, I'm going to be pushing it forward. Uh, and then there's some additional steps that I'll be showing on the uh, radio. But uh, just so I don't have to keep zooming in and out, that's, that's throttle cut, that's throttle active. These are just for reference here on the video so you can visualize what's going on in the background. Uh, I've got two different throttle cuts going on here. This top one here I'm labeled throttle cut 1. These are just the uh, Switch Pro widget that I did a video on previously. I'm um, using that so you can get a visual representation. But throttle cut number one, this is my typical throttle cut that I use. The bottom one is throttle cut number two, and that's the uh, the way that the uh, viewer wanted to do it. First of all, let me show you mine. Uh, now I'm gonna I've got the throttle cut switch up, and I'm gonna push the throttle cut away. Uh, right now the throttle is about mid, so I'm gonna push the throttle cut on. So I've activated the throttle cut switch, but as you can see, let me just uh, I'm moving the throttle, and it's still not activated yet. And you can see that here on channel three, the bar is still. Oops, the bar is, is not moving. So I take it down to throttle minimum. Throttle active. Then my throttle goes active. Now you can see my throttle is moving. Now if I flip my switch up again, throttle throttle's now cut. Throttle no longer works. Push the switch forward again, go to minimum throttle. And it activates. So that's the one I use that's really effective. The requested one was basically uh, similar, but for that one, they wanted to Flip the toggle switch to activate the throttle and then go all the way forward with the throttle all the way to 100% and then all the way to minimum before the throttle would activate. So basically just one additional step than what I use. So mine just, you just need to go all the way down. So if you, you end up bumping the switch when you got mid throttle, you know, there's nothing going to happen until you go to, until you go to minimum throttle. Uh, the viewer wanted to be able to activate the throttle, uh, the throttle cut switch and then go full throttle, then minimum throttle. Throttle active. Throttle active and then that will activate it. Uh, let me show you how I do both. I've got them both active right now, so, it, so that's why you're hearing the, the verbal twice. So let me show you how I've done that. Go into the model setup. Uh, all I've had to do is program some logical switches and some special functions. So let me first go to the logical switches. I'll cut the throttle, get rid of all so you don't see them. Okay, so the way I do it, it's obviously much less coding going on. Uh, it requires two logical switches and three special functions, okay? So logical switch number one. So you can ignore three, four, five, six, and seven. Those are all related to the requested method. Uh, my normal method is much more streamlined. It just uses these L1 and L2. So the first one, let's take a look at. L1, we're doing an A is less than X, and then we're using the throttle stick. Now you could either use the throttle stick or the throttle input. Right now I'm using throttle stick. Let me just double check that. If I go, see that's, so the little icon there is the stick. If I go to throttle input, that means it's manipulated by the, the radio. It's not the raw stick value. It's manipulated by whatever you do in the input. So if you happen to have any different mixes or curves or whatever on your input for throttle, those would be relevant to this, to, to its reading that. If you just want raw stick, that's probably the best. That way it can't be accidentally manipulated by a mix or a, or a different rate or something. For this, I prefer using the raw stick. A couple of my uh, code like this where I was overriding channels and stuff and using the sticks as the triggers, I've run into trouble a few times where I use the input rather than the raw stick because it was manipulated by trims or something like that. So it's important that you pay attention to that. Anyway, back into it. So logical switch number one is A is less than X. V1 is the throttle stick. And I'm just looking to see if it's less than minus 99. So basically, as long as your sticks are calibrated properly, you go to zero throttle, it should be minus 100. 
So as long as it's less than, <clears throat> you can also do A is equal to X if you wanted to. So A is equal to 100, you could do that. Uh, I like doing it to minus 99. And then if there's, you know, if you need a little wiggle room, you could make it less than 95, 98, just so you know you're at least almost zero throttle. Uh, and the other thing is I'm looking at the SH switch. Now yours is probably going to be the SF switch, if that's what you're using for a throttle cut. Uh, but since I'm using SH, I've got that as my AND switch. So SH up means that I've got that switch forward. That's what that means. That's it for that. I don't need to adjust any of these timers or durations. And then logical switch number two is a sticky bit. So you're going to do the function as a sticky. And it's looking V1 is L01. And then the switch in the up position, so the throttle cut, that's here. That resets the sticky. Okay, and that's all we got to do there. So if you watch the, let me back up here. So watching these, if I activate, so if I'm moving the throttle, nothing happens because my switch is, toggle switch is in the throttle cut position. If I push my throttle cut to forward, and then I go to minimum throttle, you're going to see LO1 activate and LO2 activate. If I push the throttle, throttle stick up, LO1 turns off because I'm no longer at min you know, less than minus 99, but the sticky stays on until I throw the toggle switch back to throttle cut. Okay, so that's all you got to do for the my normal method. Let's move over. I'll throttle cut it again. Let's move over to the special function. The special function is these top three, SF1, 2, and 3. So right now throttle cut is active. So special function 1, let's go into that. I'm looking the exclamation point there before LO2 means that LO2 is not on. So LO2 is basically my throttle cut now. Um, when LO2 is on, throttle is active. So the exclamation point means whenever LO2 is not active, this special function will be on. And what it's going to do is it's going to override channel 3 to a value of minus 100, which is zero throttle. So anytime LO2 is not on, I'm cutting throttle. Okay. So if I turn off my throttle cut again, I appear in the corner. I don't know if you can see that in the video or not, but SF turns off. If I flip the, th the throttle cut on again, SF turns on and you hear the voice command. So that's the only one that's needed to actually cut the throttle. The other two are just the vo verbal callouts. So let's look at those two. SF2 here. It's also looking at the uh, exclamation point LO2. So when LO2 is not on, it's going to play track, which is throttle cut. T-H-R-C-U-T. Uh, this last field here, if you have it like that, if you put on 1S, it'll just keep saying it. If you go to 1X, it'll say it, and it will also say it when you first power up the radio. If you don't want to say it on power up, then you would move the wheel over, and then you would have an exclamation point 1X. If you do that, then it won't call that out when you first power up the radio. Uh, for throttle cut, I usually usually leave that on. So when I first power up the radio, I know if my throttle cut is on or off. Okay, backing out. Uh, the last thing is the SF3 is our call out for when the throttle cut is uh, throttle is active. So now I don't have the exclamation point in front of it. I've got LO2 and I'm playing track with just throttle active. And again, I've got it just as 1x so that when I power up the radio, I know if throttle cut is active or deactivated. Okay, so that's my normal method. Uh, I am going to just delete these other ones so they're not cluttering up the. Okay, so now these three now are related to the, the custom throttle cut that you asked for. Let me back up. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to delete. Okay, so as you can see, this uh, custom method that you wanted to do where you've got to do the throttle to max and then min along with the toggle switch to do it takes uh, six logical switches instead of just two. So we're doing basically the same thing, but... Uh, We've got to do it you know, twice, uh, and we have to uh, prevent it from activating when we don't want it to. Okay, so this first one here, A is greater than X, and instead of going up, you know, all the way up to 100%, I'm just saying going above 95%, so it's almost all the way to the top. And then I also have to have the throttle cut switch. Again, in my case, it's SH. In your case, it's going to be SF. But that's got to be in the active, you know, throttle not cut position before. So if I push the stick all the way up, I'm pushing it up right now, nothing's happening to that switch. If I 
flip the, the throttle cut switch and then I go all the way up, you can see that it, every time I go to the top, it activates that. And it, uh, as soon as I do that once, it latches this LO4, the sticky one. Okay, and then if I go all the way down, once I hit minimum, this one will trigger. All three of these kind of go at the same time because now all these are met. But if I go off the bottom, so that's the one at the bottom. And then, uh, so LO4 and LO6 are basically stickies that are uh, waiting for these other two to be met first. And then LO7, I just want to make sure that LO4 and LO6 are both activated before I turn that on. So that's the one that makes it so that you have to do both up and down before it'll activate. So uh, let me go into each one of these and look at them so you can copy the settings. Okay, first one, <clears throat> this one's looking at max throttle. So if I go to max throttle, you can see now I, I, uh, I've got L3 on. Come back to minimum. So I'm looking for A is greater than X. Uh, using the throttle. Uh, now I've got the throttle input using here. I, uh, before I kind of suggested using the throttle stick. Either way it will generally work. It's just safer if you're using the sticks to deactivate or activate something. It's usually safer to use the stick, the raw stick, so trims are not a factor. So I'm just looking at it to be above 95. I also need the switch to be in the uh, throttle active position, and I don't need to adjust those. Okay, next one is the sticky for that. So I'm looking at LO3 to sticky. LO3 is the one that activates the sticky, and then it resets when I move the throttle cut switch to the cut position. So right now LO4 is on. If I move the throttle the, the throttle cut switch up, you can see it turns that off. Okay, back up. Now we'll go to LO5, which is basically the same thing, but I'm looking at the bottom. Now uh, this one, just to make sure it was at zero, let's go ahead and change that to the stick two throttle. I'm looking at it to be, you know, so it basically has to be uh, minus 100. Now I could, again, I could also use A equals X for that, but uh, I usually leave it at the less than. So if I decide I want to, I could, you know, have it go, you know, just got to be less than 95 or whatever. I just don't want the, the motor spinning at all. Now this one's a little different. The AND switch, instead of using the throttle cut switch for this one, I used LO4. And the reason I did that is because if I use the, the throttle cut switch, if the throttle's at minimum, when you throw the toggle switch and you have that set for the uh, throttle cut switch, LO5 will activate when you're at minimum throttle. But the throttle won't actually activate until I get to max throttle and the other one latches. And what's going to happen is your throttle will actually activate while you're at full throttle. So this one's very critical that you use this AND switch um, as LO4 or whatever your logical. If you've got other logical switches you're being used, that's fine. You just need to make sure you keep them straight. But make sure that the, the minimum one uses the prerequisite of the maximum having already been done so that it doesn't activate the throttle while you're at full throttle. That would be bad. LO6 is another sticky that's using the LO5. Basically means you're at minimum throttle and the throttle cut switch is in the um, cut position is what unlatches that bit and then the final one is an AND bit LO7 it's just looking for both LO4 and LO6 to be active before it'll turn on so when LO7 is on your throttle is active uh, let's jump over here to the special functions same three as before we're just using LO7 instead of, instead of LO2 so this part isn't any different depending on if you use my method or your requested method. Uh, you're playing the same tracks, you're just using the whatever your logical switch is for that. So these are identical. And now that I've disabled the other one, so that one's always going to stay cut, but uh, now if I cut the throttle, that's throttle cut. Now if I activate the throttle cut switch, I'm turning it back on. I go to full throttle, now down to low throttle, and you can see it goes active. Let me zoom out, you can see me doing the switches. Okay, so I'm doing throttle cut. There's my cut. Throttle does not work. You can see channel three, they're not moving. When I activate the throttle, even though I'm at minimum, it isn't gonna do anything until I go all the way up and then all the way down. So I'll go all the way up, I'll go all the way down. Now it activated the throttle, now I can move it. And then you can see you know, that I've activated it there. If you want to see how I did these widgets, go watch the other video on the uh, Switch Pro widget. Uh, it does some pretty cool stuff. You can put them along the top and all that. But uh, anyway, hope that helps. Um, it's uh, I'm not sure if it's necessary to do the you know all the way up, all the way down one. 
uh, because the one where you're going to go all the way down definitely is gives you that added safety where you can't actually bump it with it up. But uh, if you want that one extra step of safety, then by all means, it does, certainly doesn't hurt to add you know any extra uh, steps forward before you can uh, activate the uh, motor. So that helps. Thanks for watching. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Take care.